This video is going to cover making solid copper sulfate crystals from Epsom salts. Some information about this experiment. The normal reaction is taking copper sulfate aqueous, meaning the crystals are dissolved in water, and putting in solid magnesium will yield magnesium sulfate in solid copper. Magnesium sulfate is Epsom salt. So this normal reaction right here yields Epsom salt from the copper sulfate. You can reverse this whole reaction when it's electrically driven and you end up using magnesium sulfate to produce copper sulfate. This reaction occurs because both magnesium sulfate and copper sulfate are salts and disassociate into ions in water. The same is true for table salt, sodium chloride, of course. This is called a single displacement reaction because copper and magnesium both have a positive two charge and the sulfate ion has a negative two charge. So copper sulfate and magnesium sulfate are neutral. And if you look at this, it makes sense. Two plus right here, two plus right here, and negative two. When you combine the sulfate with either the copper or the magnesium, it's neutral. Just as another example, sulfuric acid also has a sulfate ion in it, which is a negative two charge, and hydrogen only has a plus charge. So you need two hydrogens to make this neutral. So it's H2SO4. In this experiment, the anode is positive, the copper metal is oxidized, and it's acidic. The cathode is negative, the copper metal remains untouched, and it's basic. Also, on the cathode side, magnesium hydroxide is formed. Magnesium hydroxide is insoluble in water. Basically, it has a very, very low rate of solubility in water, but we'll call it insoluble. So it will collect here as it doesn't dissolve. For our materials, we'll need copper electrodes, pretty heavy duty ones. I'm using small pieces of copper piping. We'll need a power source to produce the electrical charge. We need Epsom salts. I didn't write it down here, but we need 100 grams of Epsom salts, water, 600 milliliters, a clay pot that has no holes, and a large plastic container that can contain the clay pot and the electrodes. For our methods, bear with me here. First, dissolve the magnesium sulfate, 100 grams, in the 600 milliliters of water. Then, fill any holes in the pot. I filled mine with silicone here. I think it's going to work just fine. I've also seen corks used in different experiments. So just make sure that no solution can go in and out of your pot right here. The pot serves as a sieve, so to speak, allowing ions to travel independently through it. It works well just because of the material it's made of. Once you've dissolved your magnesium sulfate in water, pour the solution up to this part of the pot approximately, and then take the remaining amount of solution and pour it into the larger plastic container. Then using your power supply, you connect the anode, which is the positive, to the pipe, the copper pipe, which I'm using in the solution that's in the plastic container. And you take the cathode or the negative and connect it to the copper pipe, which again, I'm using inside of the pot. Quick word about the power supply. You want to have it produce at least 10 volts and anywhere from a 10th to a full amp. The higher the amperage, the faster this process will go. That's all that matters. So if you have a low amperage power supply, but it puts out 10 volts, Go ahead and try this if you want, and it will just take you some time. More thing to discuss. If you don't have a power supply, don't worry about it. Find one of these old wall hogs and look at what's written on it and see if you can get at least 10, 12 volts out of one of them. And again, the amperage will probably be low, but it will still work. You just have to cut off the end of the piece that connected to the electronic device it came from and put the positive here and the negative here. And this will indeed work for you. You do have to make sure that it's a DC volt wall hog. They do make AC ones. Just be careful about that. If you don't have copper piping, just any solid copper metal piece will work. The bigger it is, the more copper sulfate you'll get from it, just like the higher amps, the smaller, the less. But this process and experiment will still work. You'll see copper sulfate form in here, but it's in solution. So the solution just turns blue, blue, green. And in here, inside the pot, you'll notice the magnesium hydroxide forming, which is a solid. It's not going to dissolve and it's white experiment sounds really uh, complicated. It's not really. Just once you set this up, you'll have it sit for days and the take apart and then getting the copper sulfate out is actually pretty easy. All right, let's move on and actually do this. Some of the essentials we have here that already have been mentioned, distilled water, magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts, two copper electrodes. I'm using copper pipe here that I cut and polished at the end so the connections were good and a simple clay pot. This had a hole in the bottom. Many of them do, so I just put some silicone in there to block it. Um, you do not want an opening, any openings between the inside of the clay pot and the outside. You will also need some sort of a power supply that can go up to around 10 volts. This was set at 10, but it's now at 9.9, .9, whatever. So 10 volts and one amp is good. If you don't have something like this and you happen to have saved old wall hogs, look at them. This happened to be 9 volts DC and one amp. 
and this will actually work for this project. 100 grams of Epsom salts or magnesium sulfate pre-weighed. Pre-measured 600 milliliters of distilled water. I'm mixing the 100 grams of magnesium sulfate in the 600 milliliters of water. Now we take our solution here, magnesium sulfate, AKA Epsom salts, and we fill up our pot right about there. The rest of it goes in here. The copper sulfate will be forming in the area where I just poured this. I have the cathode right here hooked up. The negative goes inside the pot and the positive or the anode goes out here. Now we wait. Zoomed in here a little bit, you can see the bubbling there, meaning the electrolysis has started. This is now about 20 hours out. You can see the pipe on the right is breaking apart. There's small flecks of copper in the solution there, and the solution is definitely a blue-green. And on inside the pot, you can see all of the white collection, the white stuff. That's magnesium hydroxide. There's so much of it. I may have to take some of that solution out and put in some fresh solution of Epsom salt and water. So to get as much of the copper pipe into the solution, I ended up wrapping a copper wire around the end there and then attaching the electrode to that. And the reason for that is if the electrode ends up in the solution, some of the metal from the electrode, which is not copper, is going to end up in the solution also. I did in fact remove some of the magnesium hydroxide solution out of the pot there and replace it with fresh magnesium sulfate solution or Epsom salt. Just to confirm what we're making is correct, although we know it is, we'll check the pH. So the pH of this should be basic. Sure is, the pH of this should be acidic. And sure is. Thirty-two hours later, we can definitely see the magnesium hydroxide thickening again inside the pot there, and we have a darker blue-green color on the right here. So I'm forty-two hours out, and I'm going to change the endpoint of this experiment. We have quite a bit of copper sulfate that's gathered in the solution there, but you can see that the anode, the copper pipe there, has oxidized itself into almost non-existence and it's breaking apart badly. There's still a connection though, you can tell because there's bubbles coming up from here, but um, I think the end point will now be when there's no longer any connection on the anode. It's been around 50 hours, maybe 51 hours at this point, and I've noticed the bubbling has really slowed down. And if you look down there, it looks like there's a small gap. In addition to that, the amperage has dropped a lot, which means the connection is pretty darn poor at this point. So we're gonna call it quits. Okay, so we're gonna turn this off. First thing I'm gonna do is take this out. Look at all of that magnesium hydroxide. That's a nice secondary component to get out of this. And then I will remove this copper pipe here because it's free from the clip there to the electrode. And then this also. Take this out. Now what happens next with this is it needs to be filtered, of course. Just looking at some of these things that copper was really eaten into, you'd expect that. Here's our magnesium hydroxide, and uh, that's even clogged the pipe pretty good there. Starting to filter this solution here. I'm now transferring what we just filtered into a large one liter beaker here so we can heat it and drive off some water. About two hours, it's almost at 100 milliliters, which is where I'm going to stop it right now. And for the last stage here, I'm going to transfer that 100 milliliters into this 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, which is why I wanted to get it down this much because this will help 
not only cool, but concentrate. Excellent. The copper sulfate in a column there. So I can drop this string in here. And we're going to let that sit. Well, it's been cooling down for about two hours now, and there is a load of copper sulfate forming in there. So much so, I don't know that I'll be able to get the string out of here. We'll see. Well, this was unexpected. I decided to pour out some of it because I was concerned this was going to turn into one solid column of a copper sulfate crystal here. So this is what I poured out. This is all crystal in here. The bottom is solid. I'll probably have to add water and dissolve it and then pour it out and then recrystallize that. But you can see we clearly have a lot of copper sulfate here. What a yield. So happy with this. This one final look at what happened. We started with magnesium sulfate on the left there and ended up with a really nice yield of copper sulfate on the right. For our methods, what the 